Yep, and there it sits. Never did any ice fishing. I'll explain that in just a minute. Yeah, anyway, uh, we got everything all set to go to go fishing last Friday. And uh, Thursday night, when I made that last video of the uh, pre-ice fishing and plant uh, shout-out thing there, I mentioned how, you know, we were going to do some ice fishing the next day. Well, that night, Thursday night, I... Uh, was having difficulty with my back. I could barely move. Um, it was to the point where I have I have spinal stenosis. I had surgery done about eight years ago and helped it, but it's, lately it's been getting pretty bad. I think it's because of the work I'm doing at, at the mill on and off a loader. And there's a lot of bouncing around there and it's not helping anyway. But, uh, I uh, I woke up Monday morning or Friday morning. And it was even worse, where to the point where I I should have went to the ER and um, I kind of got through most of the day because I knew the weather was going to clear out and the uh, barometric pressure was going to drop a little bit and or come up a little bit or whatever it does to to feel better for uh, arthritic uh, arthritis in the back and hip and everything else, but. I don't want to complain too much, but that was how the weekend went. Never did any fishing. My brother ended up getting another cold back again. He wasn't really up to it anyway. Uh, I feel bad for the kids. Sunday or Saturday, they were supposed to call for all rain. We ended up with a beautiful day. I could have went then. Um, and then Sunday was going to cool off again, tighten up the ice a little bit, make it a little safer to walk on. but. The wind picked up, so it's like something prevented me from going fishing this week, you know. You know kids are back to school this week, and uh, I'm just kind of putting along till I go back to the mill on uh, Wednesday morning. So, anyway, I mentioned this grill. I might not have mentioned this grill. I mentioned it in a, in a video that I uh, commented on. Hold on a second. Anyway, this is a three burner stove that's been in the house for a long time. Ooh, awesome. Anyway, it's uh, I don't know what year it is. It's something my father had in the house. He used it. Um, and basically, whenever the, the snow storms knocked the power out of the house, he used to fire this thing up on a dining room table with a, with a 20 pound can of propane. It was awesome. The flames would be just shooting out of here, heating up the, the dining room. It was great. You know. But anyway, I don't know what year this is. He has restored it from at some point, you know, took it apart and did some uh, painting, obviously, with the black and the silver. Um, I don't know what year it is. It's pretty cool. I love these little levers here. They look like there's some type of porcelain and the you know the brass fittings. These do slide out. You know, everything's bolted in there nice. You can see where we placed a couple of screws. But the, the gas feed is right here. This is the hose. Probably not original, but it's been kind of upgraded. Um, I'm probably going to replace a lot of this because I just don't like this whole thing. It's not legal. You know, I can get one made up that's a little more legal. Actually, I do have some um, in the Scout gear that I could probably convert you know this this regulator you know onto it safely to the tank um, I might go ahead and replace this fitting right here because I notice it's inside it's a little rusty I don't know if you can see in there or not probably not but anyway that's a little rusty um, I want to get that replaced just or at least cleaned out enough where I don't want to get any uh, rust debris into the valves and restrict any gas flow there. Um, 
I'm gonna try to take this and, and build a windscreen. Um, some of you guys might be able to give me an idea um, on materials and, and, and whatnot to use to build an effective windscreen for this thing. Um, you know, obviously I want it big enough to get some decent pots in there and and still have a decent screen around it without taking up too much table room. Um, I, I don't want to restrict, make it too much bigger than this, but you know, a good sized pot are usually bigger than this anyway. Um, I, I put it in the scout trailer. I have yet to use it with the scouts, but that's my goal. Uh, I'm probably gonna use it a little bit more here you know as the summer approaches obviously it's a cool little thing uh there's no name on it i don't know what the manufacturer is there is some numbers down in here you guys can see any of that there's serial numbers but i really don't see a name some of you guys might even guess um you know without taking the thing apart and trying to read this better don't know I could take that screw off, I suppose, and read it, but there's some numbers right there. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an old unit. Uh, we had it when we were camping, uh, tent camping years ago. Uh, and I remember my father using it quite often. And then. Now, this regular is a uh, Fisher Governor from Marsh. Marshalltown, Iowa, USA. Um, I don't. You can't get these anymore, guys. I mean, you guys know. You go to the store today. The regulators are just garbage, little aluminum, whatever. This is cast aluminum, heavier duty. Obviously, it's stand the test of time. It's you know, it's well older, older than I am, and uh, you know, you just can't get them. Maybe you can. Somebody can probably tell me if that company's still around. Type 2, 212, Fisher Governor Company. Anybody out there know Fisher Governor Company is still an active company over in Iowa? Leave a comment below. So there's my three burner grill, uh, or stove. I'm gonna uh, build a windscreen. Anybody have any ideas? And material, what size gauge steel to get? I can probably scrounge around the mill and look for scrap and whatnot to, you know, to use for support framing of the. I want it to be able to fold up too, obviously. You know, like uh, the sides come in. Probably should have some kind of a base to set it on too, so it's like boom, 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 boom. You know, I got them uh, aluminum tailgate. Uh, tables that I can use as well to support it or even just pop it on the end of a picnic table like this this is actually my outdoor workbench type picnic table we don't eat on it obviously but <clears throat> yeah so this should be a fun little project um, getting this thing restored up again and then I start using it hey as far as the back, I never did go to the ER. Um, the doctor has got me on some kind of um, cortisone pills. I guess there's a pill version um, instead of going in with a needle for my hip, whether that's contributing to uh, why I'm feeling a little bit better. But we, I go see him on Friday um, for the diagnosis on the hip thing. You know, more than likely I'm going to end up going in for the shot on that. but basically lubing the joint and uh yes it's time to shave back to work tomorrow huh and i still got this uh wood splitting project coming up too but uh the kid's got a uh landscape project that he's doing that i have to go out and run and see if he needs anything for and uh they had to rent a little mini excavator he's got some cleanup to do at uh his uncle's property <laughs> business property and um, while he's out playing there maybe I'll take the camera along here or my phone camera along here and, and go get some some cool shots of that whatever they got going on plus if I time it right I'll make him buy me some lunch yeah so in the meantime I have to run to uh, Wally World to get a uh, 
a, one of them cotton filters for the humidifier in the house. Here's the wife heading to work. Hi. Careful, don't hit my truck. <laughs> anyway, I had to go to Wally World to get one of these uh, these co co cotton filters for um, the humidifier. I have to have a humidifier running with a wood stove and everything. It just drives me nuts without it. Um, what else I gotta do? I don't know. That's it. I'll take you along. Anyway, it's not too bad. It's uh, 44 Fahrenheit here. <clears throat> Sun's poking through. We did have some snowflakes this morning. Uh, it's supposed to warm up to almost 70 degrees tomorrow with some rain. And then back to cold again for the weekend so up and down the crazy weather no wonder why so many people are sick you know just ridiculous I just want warm weather to come and give her for the weather you know better weather do some more outdoor stuff you know I want to I like to do some bush crafting myself you know bring me back to my younger scout days and Oh, it seems to be getting pretty popular on our little circuit here. Um, picked up some fatwood at Walmart last week. Got a whole box of it. All cut and split, ready to rock for under 10 bucks. I'll probably show you a little clip of that after. So... This is the quaint little town of Dalton, Massachusetts. The currency paper in your pocket was made right here in Dalton. Dalton, Mass. Oh, sorry. I work for Crane, and that's a currency company. We do have foreign currency contracts. We have a paper mill in uh, Tumba, over there in uh, Sweden. Got a plant in uh, Georgia, down there in Georgia. Another one in New Hampshire. But the main currency mill. You look over my left shoulder down there in the hill, that brick building. More than likely made in that building. Mind you, we don't print here. That's left up to the Bureau of Printing and Engraving in Washington and in Texas. We only make the paper for the currency. We add safety features, security features, obviously stuff that's embedded into the fi uh, paper. Another currency mill here. The Bureau of Prints. So no, I can't send you any. You know, I don't have access to it. Those two mills are very secure. There's nobody walking in there and getting any paper with some of these high-tech uh, digital printers today. That's why we put the features we do in it to uh, prevent that kind of counterfeiting. Got to stay ahead of the, the criminals. Which is a good thing. Anytime they change the currency for me is work. So 